I think one big challenge for me when prompting tools like ChatGPT is I don't know how to evaluate whether a prompt is effective or not, right? What are ways that you can evaluate the responses of ChatGPT and kind of evaluate the effectiveness of the prompt, you know, even systematically and from a, you know, more scientific perspective than just looking at a comparison of how the output is changing? Yeah, I think that's a such a fantastic question, Adol. And I think there's a really simple acronym here that I like to use to effectively uh, evaluate responses from ChatGPT, and that is LAUGH. Now, it isn't as humorous as, as it actually sounds. Um, the acronym is L-A-R-F. And whilst I go into a lot more detail on the course with understanding prompt engineering, I think it would be useful to give a high-level overview of how this can make you a more discerning user of ChatGPT to effectively evaluate your responses. So starting with L, which stands for logical consistency. Why I like to start it here is, you know, if I'm asking ChatGPT, look, what are the benefits and drawbacks of uh, the drag reduction system on a Formula One car? And as you can see, we've got Formula One as quite a recurring theme throughout this podcast, uh, Adel, which, which happens to be one of my uh, one of my favorite pastimes. Uh, anyway, okay, and it states this list, um, and it goes, oh, it introduces the, oh, it it makes the car's top speed uh, higher. But then also on the, on the drawbacks, it says, oh, it makes the car's top speed higher. All of a sudden, you've got this, contra this contradicting statement saying that it is also um, a benefit, but also a drawback. And that's, whilst it's quite a simple example, it highlights that these, these, these models are fallible. They do make mistakes. And using the discerning human eye to review the output and check for that coherence, I think is super, super valuable. Moving on, you have accuracy. and this tendency for models to hallucinate. And what I mean by hallucination is ChatGPT can often state an answer. Uh, it can often confidently state an incorrect answer. So if you go, look, who was the first person to walk on the moon? And it goes, oh, it was Buzz Aldrin. Um, obviously, the, the, the correct answer is Neil Armstrong with, with Buzz Aldrin being the, the second person. Um, so it, it's super important super useful to cross-reference these answers with uh, alternate resources. For example, you can add things such as, such as the browsing capability or even use plugins or GPTs that can reference papers and resources that are ultimately infusing the output with you know, factual data uh, that can ultimately lead to a better response. R stands for relevance. So this is essentially meeting the context. And what I mean by that, Adol, is you're essentially ensuring that the response aligns with the context and actually what you wanted to get out of the answer when you were writing the prompt. So if you're asking for you know, a list of great uh, you know, restaurant recommendations in London and it says, oh, here's this recommendation, but it's in New York City, all of a sudden you aren't meeting the context of what it is that you wanted to achieve. Excuse me. Now, I think similarly, tools can be a fantastic way of overcoming this and over, of overcoming these limitations. And I'm sure we'll get onto those a little bit later. Uh, and then the final part of this acronym, F, factual correctness. So as we're all aware, these models have a cutoff date. Uh, and uh, when you ask a question without the context of online browsing, it's unable to tell you what happened in you know, January of 2024. Now, it might do, but it would be hallucinating, which we talked about earlier, where it's confidently stating this incorrect answer. For example, you know, who won the World Cup or other great sporting events or, or happenings which, which, which took place past this cutoff date. Now, why I think it's really important to understand these is it, it equips you with where ChatGPT strengths, but also limitations lie. And by understanding both, it really allows you to get the most out of the model and enable you to achieve whatever task or action it is that you set out to do.